So the one of the, the one thing I don't I, I don't really know too much about is like sort of how the semiconductor industry is, is sort of dealing with all this. So one of the things I was interested in asking about is, um, you know, what sort of where where you see them trying to sort of do things and and make improvements that make uh, you know make this kind of technology more efficient for them, or if they're in, or because what they have learned is that when you when these big software waves uh, where this basically the math has to change or the the primary math has to change they go up and down the stack to make it feasible um and, and it's, a, it's a big software change more than it is a hardware change it's just like what kind of math is the at least chips prioritizing oh i think they're they're much more responsive to than a lot of people think it's it's not as sexy because when the chips that go into a computer or into a device that the only people who really care about that are the guys like me maybe you to a degree because you enjoy getting into the technical stuff that they're doing but to the average consumer they don't really care about, oh, here's the new security algorithms that Qualcomm or Intel are putting into their CPU. But they are. I mean, they're, 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 I mean, I think they are, quite, and that's why I think in general, the silicon being manufactured today versus five years ago is much more secure than the stuff that was around, you know, uh, not too long ago. So that's a good step in the right direction. But even companies like Qualcomm, let's use Qualcomm, for example, you know, they're trying to, and they're, they're a, a major leader, leader in the AI space. They, they, they um, uh, now have uh, uh, silicon, basically, that allows you to do AI algorithms in an offline manner, on-device manner, meaning that you don't have to be connected to the cloud, which is going to be really interesting that you could you could use applications like ChatGPT or others, even without an internet connection. You know, because remember, there's a, they, ha they, they operate in markets where the internet connectivity is not that good, you know, and, you know, you, you not prioritize exactly right. Oh. So they're doing a really wonderful job with this edge, you know, call it edge-based AI, where you don't need it. You can actually, um, you can execute these large language models, which are billions and billions of, um, of transactions. You can do that on a local device level without having a uh, uh, internet connection. And remember, there's also advantages from a security standpoint for doing more stuff locally than up in the cloud. I mean, not to say the cloud is not important because the cloud obviously is very, very important. But unless you're dealing with cloud applications that um, allow you to, that have their own set of security protocols, and most of them do, you know, you're always taking a bit of a risk when you put some content up in the cloud, you know? Now, fortunately, there hasn't, as far as I know, there hasn't been a major hack of cloud services like Box or Dropbox. But look what happened, you know, I just spoke. I think there was one with, uh, I think there was one recently with a password service. Well, just a couple of days ago, and I, and, and I spent my, um, you know, uh, in the instance of in, uh, interest of transparency, my cousin uh, works in the, in, uh, manages the entertainment center at MGM. And MGM just had, I talked to him last night. Uh, they just had a massive, massive breach into their reservation systems that have all that confidential information about, you know, the, the, the patrons that go to the, uh, to the MGM hotels. And that's how they kind of distri distribute all kinds of rewards and perks. And I spoke to them last night. They are shut down right now. Their business is down 60% because most of their business is people who go to the casinos. They're, you know, they're high rollers. They spend a lot of money, frankly, but they get perks. They get their rooms paid for. They get kinds of comps. All of that is shut down until they can you know, resolve this breach stuff. It's costing them hundreds of millions of dollars, if not more, uh, every, uh, for every day that they, they um, can't get their systems up and running. So my point is, is that a lot of this stuff will continue to happen. And, and let's face it, you know, you'll, you'll appreciate this. Most companies, you know, uh, they treat IT in a very transactional, uh, in terms of budget, they until they have a problem, until some of their companies get hacked, whether there's a ransomware attack or God forbid, they, they, someone hacks and steals a lot of information. Then they get serious and says, well, now we do have to upgrade our, our security system. Now we have to. We may be a company that has, you know, 25,000 people in the field with, with computers. Maybe we do need to have um, better security software on, on those client devices to make sure this kind of thing doesn't happen. And unfortunately, a lot of companies until, you know, it's kind of like earthquake insurance, you know, out in California. You don't have to get in earthquake insurance. I get it just for the peace of mind, frankly, because I'm, I'm not going to be an earthquake right now and we'll, we'll, the, the podcast will fail. But the... Um, the reality is, is that most people don't worry about it until they have a problem, you know, and that's unfortunately that's when it's like
Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, and I agree with you in general, but I think that, and I hopefully people don't get used to it, but I think there's something pernicious about, like, for the example you gave with this, uh, unfortunately, this lady who had a, had a ransom situation with her daughter where it was a phone call. There's something pernicious about that kind of experience that's uh, that hits a bit more, maybe emotionally, I think people really run out of emotion, that uh, it hits more emotionally than someone stole my password or something, you know, where uh, you can, I think, I think there might, I, I'm not, there might be a bit of a boom in the security industry because like the, the kind of demos you can do when it comes to um, saying, showing what can happen, it can be a lot more, can, a bit, can be a bit more like a movie, right? Like this, I mean, this really is, this is literally taken what you just, the example you just gave, right? So uh, we'll see, we'll see. I, I, I might, I might have to eat my words uh, very soon. <laughs> but I feel like there you can you can really sell like hey this is a this, right, the whole demo could be just like this is very convincing wasn't it um, but it's not true you know yeah I mean the general rule that I kind of impart to people you know family members I get a lot of you know because of my podcast I get a lot of inquiries from from individuals is that you really have to you really have to guard your information in a very uh, tightly controlled and managed way and you know people who use smartphones for example. They're so excited when they see a new app and they download it. They just kind of willy-nilly hit the accept button when they see the terms and because they're not lawyers, they don't read the terms and conditions. And then they realize, and guess what? I just agreed to something to give away a piece of my privacy. Um, and uh, that's a shame because you know companies should do a better job of, 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 of um, articulating what's required to use their app. And many. But in a way, because, it, because it, it's a bit of an oligopoly, right? So they almost don't give you a choice. Like, you kind of need this for work and, like, you know, you don't really have an option. And sometimes these selections are... If you don't agree to the terms and conditions, they say, okay, good, see you later. Oh, when you know, you can't get the app. Yeah, thank you for your time. Yeah. And a lot of people are using these apps because your company is using the app. And that's, so their personal information goes through because their company, you know. So it becomes, uh, you know, they have quite a stranglehold. So, we'll, you know, if you like what you saw... Take a look at the description. You'll see segments. You'll see the full podcast. Go take a look. Please go listen. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later.